Hi there, I'm Clueless Mike, and you're watching Modelling for Advantage. So, we've got another unboxing today, and this one's quite an exciting one, mainly because the box is so big. It is an unboxing of Cadia Stands, an Astra Militarum, or as most of us know it, Imperial Guard Army set. And first impressions, it's pretty weighty. This is a hefty box. So without further ado, let's see what's inside. Okay, so I've already taken the sleeve off the side of the box, mainly because if I hadn't, this video would be twice as long with the sticky stuff they'd put on it. Now we're gonna attempt to get this out of here. One thing you'll note in the top of the box, there isn't one of those. See, look, this bit's even gonna be this long as well. In the top of the box, there isn't one of those protective posters they often put. And you can see it's dinged up the top of the box, which is an interesting decision from them. Usually they have those there, these bits had gone through. And you can see why when we've got it open. This is a monstrously full box. More actually than I expected in here. So let's take a look at what we've got. Now, I was weirdly in a games workshop earlier today, getting my three miniature of the month, which was a skink. Um, and it came on a big sprue with five other, with four other skinks. Um, and it was on a swing that size, and it had five skinks, which are this big, with no options. And there was so much space, and you look at this, and that is completely packed, completely full. This one looks like it is the new Cadian Command Squad. Really nice detail on these. I'm looking closely, and you can see there's a massive amount of detail. Um, that's obviously really nice if you love a lot of detail. But if you're trying to batch paint a load of Cadians, and this is an Imperial Guard army, which you might want, I think I usually field 60 Cadian infantry in my army, uh, that could get a little long-winded when painting. But if you really like the detail, and obviously the new proportions of the new Cadians are really nice, much better, much more human than the previous Cadians, they're actually a similar size. I've measured them up against each other. You can go and find pictures on the internet quite happily. Uh, they're actually not too different in size. One looks like a slightly taller human than the other, but they're still kind of like same scale as each other, but the proportions are completely different. Um, the arms and torso are much slimmer on the new models, as are the legs. Um, and it just looks more like a regular human. Whether you like that or not, up to you. The heads are smaller um, in comparison to the rest of the model as well. Uh, so that is the new Command Sprue. It's got uh, loads of different special weapons on there. I think uh, maybe one or two of each. There's two plasma guns, so two of each. Um, it's got a flag. It's got a medical guy. Um, it's got a Vox caster. Loads of stuff on there. Now, next up, we have the new Sentinel. I believe this is the new Sentinel. We're having a quick look. Yes, it's got a Sentinel foot there. Now, this thing is mounted on an 80 millimeter base, which is the same size base as a Redemptor Dreadnought. This is massive now. It's much bigger than the old Sentinel. Um, I'm gonna be using my old Sentinels as Scout Sentinels. I'm gonna use this new one that I'm having out this box. Um, I'm gonna use this as an Armoured Sentinel because in the rules, the Armoured Sentinel has more toughness. I think maybe more wounds, it's slower. So I think using the two different models as those instead of just having an open and a closed canopy, which is how they want you to differentiate it using the model, you can see. Closed canopy is up there. Uh, I don't like the, um, the open canopy. I don't like the open canopy on any of these. Um, so my previous Scout Sentinels were modeled fully closed anyway. So that's how I'm gonna be using that. It's got ooh, just, it's got all the weapon options on there. It's got um, a heavy plasma cannon, which I think is probably the best option now. Um, it's got a LAS cannon, it's got auto cannon, it's got a hunter killer missiles, it's got lights, loads of detail on here, loads of little bits you can stick on the side as well to kind of just make the models look a little different. When you've got a single kit to make a unit that can have up to three models, so you can have nine in your army, you really want to be able to differentiate them and mix them up a little bit. So that is a really nice kit. Um, slightly different styling to the old Sentinel, which again leans me towards um, using the old ones as scouts and the new ones as armoured sentinels. Now, this is probably the biggest seller from the box, so this is the only real new unit in here. Now, these are the field guns. So they're really nice looking. You'll have seen the um, models online, no doubt. Um, they come as a set of two, 
in the rules, you have to buy them as two. Um, and you can't add a third one to it. You can't even add two more to it. You have to have just two. That's the only option they come with uh, to have two of them. You get three choices of gun. You get a giant LAS cannon. And it really is super powerful. Much better than a LAS cannon on a marine tank. Say so you get a... Uh, multiple rocket launcher which is really good for the infantry fire but the main thing you're going to be sticking on there is the field gun howitzer type thing there um, because it's an artillery piece it looks like an artillery piece and it looks the best and it's actually best in game as well out of line of sight shooting really useful for the guard um they look really nice i really like the actual models of them uh they're modeled very much like a world war ii artillery piece should be um it's, i suspect the details for some of you out there who are more au fait with the correct details of how an artillery piece works wouldn't be so happy. Things like I've seen people online saying that kind of like the, the breach clearing and stuff would kill the guy standing behind it, things like that. Uh, but they look really nice. One drawback for them, though, is that these are mounted on 100 millimeter wide bases. So, and being a man, we know exactly how big measurements are for this kind of thing. 100 millimeters is about that big. That is utterly massive for one of these on, and you have to take them in units of two, so they're really hard to hide on the board when you've got to hide two great big round bases like that. And these are only, I believe, toughness four uh, with a four up save. They've got a reasonable amount of wounds, but that is a drawback for these, which means I'm not certain how much competitive play they'll actually see. Then we also have in here two sprues of infantry. Now I'm just going to double check the back of the box. Let's have a quick look. I'm trying to remember how many you actually get in here. Yes, you get 20 of the basic infantry units, which are these. So we'll just look at one of these. It must have 10 men on this squad, uh, on this uh, sprue. I'm just looking for torsos, ideally. It is really mixed on here. You remember the old sprues where these have all the torsos lined up. Now they are just higgledy-piggledy. But looking on there, yeah, I suspect there's 10 all on this one sprue. Um, it'll come with a couple of each special weapon. or well, sorry, one of each special weapon, because you can no longer have matching special weapons in the same squad. So you can't take two flamers, you can't take two melters. You have to have one melter, one flamer, one plasma. That's the maximum you get. Um, the sergeant gets a cool, where I'm looking on it on here, going to see if we can find it. Gets a cool special weapon that you're going to take. So over here, you can see this thing. If I stick my hand behind it, it might show up a bit clearer. It's kind of like a Tommy gun type of thing. It's a barrel fed auto gun looks really cool it's actually reasonable rules wise it's nothing special but i think you'll probably take that mainly because it looks super cool it's even got an old tommy gun kind of like a stock on it as well so they've really gone for that look again similar for command squad these are super detailed i mean i'm just looking at one leg here the boot itself has got multiple folds in it's got multiple little latches on the side of it it's got studs through it there's a lot of detail on just a boot on a guardsman whether you want to paint that kind of detail in, up to you. And that will probably depend on whether you want this kit or not. So there are two sets of those, so 20 guardsmen. So overall in that kit, you're getting 20 basic guardsmen. You're getting a command squad uh, with all the options for it, which are, are really good in the new rules. You're definitely going to want at least one in your Imperial Guard army. You're getting a Sentinel, again, excellent to the rules. And you're getting two of the new field guns, which depending on what kind of table layout you use, whether they're good or not, but it's kind of like decided by that. Now, this is weird. So they put the poster thing in, but it's in between the sprues and the bottom of the box. And that is because you get a super flashy, nice rule book in here, which they obviously don't want you digging up with the sprues. So that's where they put that. Much better to protect the rule book than to protect the top. We have bases. You'll notice here, these are all 25 mil, which I'm really pleased to see. It means they haven't changed the base size on standard infantry models, which really happy about. I would not be wanting to have to rebase anything. One thing they have changed, though, is the command squad now come on 28 millimeter bases. Less happy about that. I like all my bog standard humans to be on the same size base, just for consistency's purpose. And I don't like having to rebase stuff every time they change the rules. So I certainly won't be rebasing my old command squad. But just for those interested, the new command squad will be coming on 28 millimeter bases, or I think it might even be 28.5. So here are those other bases I was talking about. So that is a Sentinel base. Arthly mess. I'm just going to find a little guardsman I've got lying around up here. This is a Scion. I'm part way through painting. So you can see the size base, that's a 25 mil. That is an 80 mil base for the new Sentinel, really big. But then the field gun 
look at the size of that. And you have to have two of those in a unit. You are not hiding those many places on the table. And it also makes them, even though they're not particularly fast moving purposes, and they shouldn't be, they're field guns, but moving that around, trying to get models between them, I think putting them on giant round bases like that, when the model itself is like this, I think that just makes gaming with them a real problem, which I'm really not a fan of. I hate it when they put vehicles on bases nowadays, like the orc, um, orc buggies. All of them come on giant bases, really annoying. So then we have here a deck of the cards. Personally, I don't use the cards when playing. I find that they clutter up the table space and you spend as much time looking through cards as you're looking for a book. Uh, but for those who like the cards and sort them out and use them appropriately, they're actually really useful. So they're in there. I'm not going to open that up, um, but we know what they're going to be. They're going to be all the stratagem cards. There's going to be all the order cards in there, which are actually probably the most useful resource to have because the book really relies on these orders. There's going to be the psychic discipline in there as well. So actually, as far as a card deck goes, there's quite a lot in there um, so it feels reasonably chunky that's a pretty useful deck of cards I think and then we have the book oh, I'm not going to look into the book here but I suspect there might be another video up shortly to have a look at you'll see this lovely guy on the front is the new Lord Solar I think he's Lord Solar Leonitis named after the guy from 300 um, the book oh, I've read it before it's really nice um, a few things missing but we'll go into that more in the review Thanks for watching. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description, but a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whirling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you.